Welcome to Introduction to Theater. Um, I am your professor, Emily Seal, and um, this is through Motlow State Community College, and we are so glad to have you. You could have chosen music or art, uh, but you chose theater, so welcome, uh, and uh, thank you for choosing us. That is me, Professor Emily Seal. Uh, I have an MFA in theater performance, and I've worked uh, professionally as an actress and a costumer. I currently uh, teach at the Moore County campus. I used to teach at the Smyrna campus, but we're all one campus. But if you're looking for my office, it's at the Moore County campus. Now, I'll be the voice of all of these lectures. Um, part of my vision as the master uh, maintainer of the course is that you are able to really connect to me. Um, now, on your syllabus, uh, not your syllabus, your schedule, well, but also your syllabus, you may see a different person's name there. It may say Brendan Taylor, David Crutcher. Um, that is actually your instructor of record. But I'm the master maintainer for the class, and so I'll be giving the lectures. If you go on to a larger school, you might have a lecturer and a TA uh, or some other situation. So um, I'm sorry if that's confusing. I know that um, you may be tempted to email me if you have a question, but you want to email your instructor of record. Some of you are listening to this lecture and you're my student. So uh, now that you're thoroughly confused, let's get started. <laughs> So this is a takeoff day, which is really kind of exciting. Uh, hopefully you've traveled by air before and you know sort of the anxiety and the excitement of that takeoff feeling. Uh, it is an important moment. It's the most dangerous moment for passengers is a takeoff and landing. Um, and at the beginning of the semester, the beginning of your term, uh, even if it's just like the July term, uh, there's a lot of critical information that's thrown at you during these first few days. Please, please, please take notes. Hold on to that syllabus. Get it out. Underline it. Highlight it. Take notes in the margin because, as Aristotle says, well begun is half done. Uh, you know, putting the assignments on your calendar, getting everything in your mind's eye of anticipating your assignments, staggering for them for yourselves, mentally prepping yourself for your semester. And then, you know, maybe you get the semester, you're taking a look at it, you get a gut feeling, this is too much. Maybe I need to drop a class. Maybe you get started in the online environment and you just say, you know what, this is not for me. I'm more of a face-to-face -face person and that's okay. But that's your responsibility in these first few days is start to feel your way around, right? Uh, don't be afraid to ask for help. I am here, your instructor of record is here, uh, the librarians and the libraries on all four campuses can answer questions. Uh, your D2L helpline is a great resource and that's on the syllabus, that exact phone number to call. If you lose a password, if you need help navigating something, something's going wrong, they're your technical support. So please don't skip this step. I know it can be tempting to sort of half pay attention in these first few days, but um, pay attention to your professors, but also pay attention to yourself and the way you're feeling. And make sure that you're not biting off more than you can chew. Because unfortunately, online classes have a lower success rate. Once again, welcome to the class. Bad news. Um, they have a lower success rate, so you need to know this about yourself. Oh, sorry. That's my mother's text message there. My mom works on these theater productions with me, so uh, we'll talk about that throughout the semester. I should have put my airplane mode on. But um, shh. All right. <laughs> So please don't go into these quizzes and just wing it. Please study. Please apply yourself. Please don't think, especially my students who are dual enrollment or coming right out of high school, that you can apply the same amount of effort that you do in, in those other classes that maybe you had on the high school level. Not making any sort of statement about your high school teachers or your environments there, but I see it over and over again that people sort of wake up at midterm and go, oh my goodness. I could actually fail this course, right? Um, and, and I say that 
not only as a theater teacher, but as a speech teacher, and also just as an academic advisor. People come to my office and say, wait, this isn't, this isn't high school. Somebody might actually fail me, uh, I, but I'm, I'm showing up. I'm, I'm taking the quizzes. I'm making, you know, 50s and 60s. Uh, that's not enough, right? And um, unfortunately, I have a lot of students who either make 90s and 100s in this class or Fs. It seems like you're either showing up and you're, you're doing the work or you're not even checking in. And another thing, unfortunately, with online classes, it's easier, it's not as easy for us to keep tabs on you. You know, you get a sore throat, you check out for a little while, it's not like you're in a physical classroom where we can see you. So, once again, I hate to start the class on such a negative note, but we want you to succeed. And part of you succeeding is making up your mind now that you're going to show up at the table, that you're going to work hard, that you are in it to win it, um, that you're going to log in and make appointments for yourself to make sure this work gets done because it's not like a high school classroom. There's not going to be anybody holding your hand. Your responsibility is to print off that schedule. Um, I'm not going to text you and remind you that an assignment is due, right? This is a college level class and I'm so excited about this curriculum. I've worked very hard on it. Uh, made it from scratch <laughs> and uh, I picked a new textbook which I also really enjoy. I hope you enjoy it. You'll see that I, I skip over a lot of stuff in this textbook. So uh, there it is. Theater the Lively Art. Alvin Goldfarb. You think he got picked on as a kid? I think he might have gotten picked on as a kid. Alvin Goldfarb. But uh, if you want to purchase it, uh, rent it digitally, uh, whatever floats your boat, buy it online, buy it in the bookstore, it do not matter to me. I don't see a huge change between the different editions as well. If you want to purchase a former edition, just make sure that you get that in a timely way. And I'm going to also try to make sure that we have copies of the textbook in the libraries for you to use in the meantime, because we want to make sure you get to that first assignment and you're prepared having read chapters one and two. So our supplementary text, the text you'll be writing a play over, is The Piano Lesson by August Wilson. There's also a movie version available on YouTube if you'd like to watch that, but you're probably also going to need that hard copy because you'll be using direct quotes from the text in order to support your arguments. So please um, ha find a hard copy, whether it be at a library or purchasing it. It's not a very expensive play script. Play scripts are pretty small and usually generally, uh, but those are the only two uh, textbooks that you need for the course, so make sure you go ahead and get those. I know my first week of classes, I always have students email me and ask, do we need the book? Yes, you need the book. So there's that. All right, so creativity is a skill, and just like any muscle, you got to do reps get swole, right? Um, I have several little activities in the discussion boards that involve writing, for example, and writing something creatively. Um, I have an assignment where you have to do a rendering, uh, a drawing of a costume, and I have students say to me, creativity is not my, or art, I don't do art, I can't draw. And that hurts my heart because I just innately believe, um, you know, I watch my little son, my little four-year-old, his name is Elliot and you will hear about him often, uh, dancing around and drawing things and singing and that inhibition that he has. Uh, and then I see I had a really mean art teacher that sort of taught me that I couldn't draw. <laughs> and nothing like institutional education to kill people's dreams. Uh, but I... I don't care if you don't think you can. You don't get to go to your math teacher and say, I don't do math. Um, I am an arts teacher and I have a responsibility to make sure that you cultivate and, and you know, do those reps. I'm not going to give you a failing grade just because you can't draw hands, <laughs> right? Um, I, I need to see some effort. I need to see you coloring within the lines, but I'm, I'm more interested in you creating something and getting excited about something you made. Um, we live in an age of consumerism and shopping and, you know, just, I want the world to have more producers, more people who can think um, creatively and who can 
produce things and not just Google it, right? Um, and, and no matter what your job is, it can be in the boardroom, it can be in the surgery, wherever you are, you're going to have to be creative on the spot and you're going to have to improvise. And I want you to start thinking about that now. Uh, I think that's part of the responsibility that the state gives us in saying this is mandated curriculum because we want you to be able to be creative. And that's the theme of the course, but just to warn you, please don't email me and say I can't draw or I can't do art or I'm not creative um, because I will, that first of all, that will hurt my soul on a deep level, um, but also it's unacceptable. You can, you can try, please try. Uh, I'm not going to shame you. I'm not going to be that art teacher who uh, ridicules you in any way. So make yourself vulnerable. It'll be cool. <laughs> Ah, so it can be tempting to proverbially leave work early um, and by which case I mean there are quizzes for the class and you have weekly quizzes and those quizzes are very low stakes they're only worth 10 points a piece uh, so if you bomb one it's not going to kill your grade um, but they're just my little way of you checking up and making sure that you're keeping up with the assignments you I'm not there over your shoulder. I can't tell if you're looking at your notes or looking at your book or Googling Quizlet or, you know, using some other app while you're taking the assessment. Um, but the real sort of proverbial payday ha, comes all the way down to that proctored final exam. So those are the same questions from the quizzes that'll be on the final exam. And that'll be on ground and that will be with the proctor. So no open book, no open quiz. So what I would encourage you to do when you're taking the quiz is to be mindful. Maybe put your notes away and close your book and um, take some notes for yourself since those are going to be the things that are going to be on the final exam because that final exam is worth 100 points, right? So if you leave work early every uh, week, proverbially speaking, you, you just kind of take the quiz, you know, you sort of click around and make an educated guess, you're really only cheating yourself because that big payday, that big final exam is when you're going to really test your knowledge. So take those quizzes seriously. Make sure that you're paying attention and not letting it get away from you. Um, every week, or as I call them, modules. And if you're in a summer or an accelerated course, then it's not going to be weekly. You'll probably have two a week. Um, if you're taking, for example, an ACE class or something, then it's going to be at least two a week because those classes move really fast but if this is a regular semester like fall 2019 spring 2019 those are going to be um, module a week basically except for Thanksgiving spring break etc etc so every week you'll have a discussion question sometimes that's writing a poem sometimes it's just telling me who's your favorite director uh, just a way for us to interact online i ask that you please be civil and we'll come back to that in just a moment use your best english uh, please take a take those opportunities to um, practice good grammar because we just want to model that in academic settings in general so all the practice we can get Piano lesson, I've already said, that's a, your big first paper. So you'll read the play and then you'll pick one of the characters and you'll write uh, a psychoanalysis basically. And there are questions provided. I have a whole lecture that's entitled The Piano Lesson. So before you write the paper, make sure you listen to the piano lesson. If you are a bad uh, writer and you know that about yourself, that you really, I don't know. Look at me putting the labels. It's just giving all this oogly googly stuff about art teachers and shame and I'm like, you're a bad writer. Uh, if you have struggled with English in the past and want to go ahead and start on that assignment now, make sure you go through the writing centers and get um, help on the assignment before you turn it in. Uh, there's nothing that says you can't work ahead on all of these assignments, right? All of these are asynchronous. There are deadlines, but there are not any... Um, all of it's available on the first day. So uh, nothing in the curriculum is cumulative necessarily. We just jump around to different talk to topics. Okay, this week we're going to talk about acting. Next week we're going to talk about directing. Then we'll go into theater history. So if you want to go ahead and start on the piano lesson early, if you're a bad writer or... <laughs> I just said it again. Dang it. <laughs> if you have, if you struggle with writing 
um, and want to get a head start on that don't let that sneak up on you I have people do that too where they're just like okay I'm gonna go in you know most of the due dates are Thursday so I'm gonna go in on Tuesday and oh my goodness I have to write a paper in the next two days don't don't let that sneak away from you right make sure you don't leave work early proverbially speaking your second paper is a live production critique so I'm gonna ask you to go out buy a ticket sit in a theater seat watch at least two hours of theater and go home and write a critique of it uh, please go ahead and plan that trip now right get with your girlfriend get with your uh, parent whoever you're gonna see the play with um, if you are struggling financially please let me know now so that we can try to make accommodations through the foundation for you or through some other avenue um, you know I have in the past taken big groups of people to go see plays together but then what often happens is I've picked the play I like cheesy musicals and I have a whole row full of 19 year old boys rolling their eyes because they don't want to sit through this cheesy musical so I've really sort of tried to put the onus on you guys to find the plays you like right and there are tons of different kinds of plays out there if you don't like musicals don't go see a musical if you don't like Shakespeare don't go see Shakespeare right um, you know look at what the other schools are producing MTSU uh, is doing uh, we usually have a play at Motlow if you want to come see that it's usually free for students so maybe a dollar I think it's a dollar for students don't don't misquote me there um, so find what's right for you put some effort in I have a whole module just labeled live production critique full of different links to different shows you can find um, I do ask that you email your professor and just check in with them I've had students think that they're going to go see a production and in fact they're going to a jazz act or a concert and just because it's at TPAC doesn't mean it's a play it could be a movie review I had someone go to see the Princess Bride they thought they were going to see the musical but it was just a movie viewing of Princess Bride so check with your professor just to make sure that that's copacetic it needs to be at least two hours long it needs to be a, a piece of traditional theater that way can't just go see a 10 minute play or your niece's fifth grade concert and call it a play so check in with your professors and you know I have a whole discussion question just tell us what you're gonna go see because it may be that a few of you guys uh, are all gonna go see the same thing you could go together in carpool save the environment so we have a costume rendering which I already mentioned lots of information in the uh, in the module about that as well doing that drawing and coloring it and uh, doing an analysis for that costume and turning it in not a lot of points um, I've tried to make the technology as easy as possible so uh, make sure that you read the worksheet and kind of gives you information on that and as I already mentioned you do need to register through Motlow uh, testing center you can just go to mscc.edu backslash testing and it will give you um, walk you through how to sign up for a Motlow online proctored exam and so you do have to physically go into a Motler 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 uh, Motlow uh, location to be proctored and they'll put in the password and they will make sure you don't use your book or your notes I wish we didn't have to do that I know a lot of you are signing up for online class because you're busy um, but unfortunately cheating is rampant in these online classes and every time it happens it breaks my heart a little see the plagiarism seeing people log in at the same time um, and make the exact same mistakes uh, there's just rampant cheating I've also set up my quizzes so that I'm not going to give you the answers and I know in some ways that's antithetical because I'm the teacher and I want you to know what the right answers are but once again I have students who log in write down the answers and then sell those answers or give those answers to uh, you know their more popular friend or whatever and so I just have trust issues about that and so I'm not going to just turn around and hand you the right answers to the quizzes because I know that cheating is rampant and I feel like that just adds to the environment of cheating and like I said people are cheating on quizzes and then they're coming in and they're failing the proctored exam so when you're cheating you're really only cheating yourself so 
da 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 such a 1980s after school special thing to say when you're cheating you're only cheating yourself um, but college isn't going to get any easier you need to start learning how to think learning how to study um, learning how to hold yourself accountable for these deadlines and uh, grow in that brain because it's a skill your ability to focus your ability to apply yourself um, you know, when we hand you that diploma, we're saying this person can solve problems, this person can think, and it should mean something. I hope it means something. And I want to be part of that accountability process. Another word about plagiarism. Um, it's wrong. It's on the syllabus. Uh, no highlighting and cutting and pasting from websites like Lit Charts and, uh, and Easy um, Answers, you know, Cutting and pasting off of a website is rarely going to fly. We have what is called plagiarism detection software, so we can see when the words that you're using have been turned in by another Motlo student, another student at a different college, when it is a direct quote from online. Um, so don't do it. Do the hard work. Apply yourself. Put it in your own words, even if that's a little more messy. Um, I've heard, you know, I've read a lot of these papers, so I want to hear your voice, your perspective. I don't want to hear some literary analysis of some other professor somewhere. I want it to be your words. So if you're not sure what plagiarism is, I would challenge you to make an appointment with the, um, with the writing center. Really talk to them about it because some of you have been given misinformation or maybe taught to do things like just rearrange the sentence order words and now it's in your own words. It's not true. Um, even ideas can be plagiarized. So please, please, please be ethical in your writing and in your test taking. So I said that module word. So for example, your first module is chapter one and two, jazz hands. Uh, what is in a module? Uh, so first you read the chapter or chapters, right? Um, I've had some students tell me that they sort of watch the lecture and and note what parts of the chapter are important and then go back and read it and then watch the lecture again. Whatever works for you. Just make sure that you're keeping up with the reading because there may be a nuance. I'm often trying to simplify things so that it's understandable, um, but the testable information may be more nuanced. So make sure you're not just listening to my lectures and then taking the quizzes. Make sure you're supplementing that with reading. And part of the reason I picked this book is it's got great um, notes in the margin. Uh, you know, those definitions are right in the margin. There's a great glossary in the back, great um, cross-referencing in the back, an index. So use that textbook, get your money's worth out of that textbook. Um, often, you know, theater is a visual language, so I, it's one thing for me to talk about it. I'm going to try to always show you pictures, as I am right now. Uh, very helpful, those jazz hands. Uh, but also, go watch videos. I have almost always included some sort of video. I say that about half the time. About half the time I include some videos in, in order to elucidate what we're talking about. You know, I can sit here and try to explain to you, oh, well, Beijing Opera is elaborate wigs and makeup and people are you know, using acrobatics, but until you actually see it in motion, if you ever find yourself kind of lost about what I'm talking about, pause the video, go pause the lecture and go watch the video, because sometimes that's going to really um, cut through the middleman, which is me. I'm the middleman. Uh, thank you for taking theater. Discussion board. So I ask that you always read through all the discussions before you post yours because it's often a situation where I'm going to ask you, like, you know, um, to add to the current discussion. Don't be that guy who walks into the conversation halfway and goes, hey, what are we talking about? I was thinking before actually listening to the discussion that's already going on. I don't have sort of an end date on discussions. Uh, I got an entire degree online uh, and I would often get frustrated with discussion boards because by the time you got comfortable in them, by the time you were learning something from each other, they would close. And so I don't really have a um, an end date on those discussions. I keep them open, but that's partially because I just want you guys to keep discussing and keep learning from each other because there's a lot of research and data to support the fact that you guys teach each other better than I teach you. Uh, once again, thank you for paying me. So. 
Um, like I said, there's two papers in the class, and then sometimes there's that activity, like that rendering drawing uh, that needs to be turned in, but um, that's you know only in three of the modules. So I don't put those end dates on your calendar, so make sure um, that you put those dates on your own personal calendar. Does that make sense? So, so the quizzes have an end date uh, built in, but like the papers I haven't put on your calendar redundantly because to me they're all part of the module that go along with that chapter. So uh, make sure you're making a note of those paper dates and meeting those deadlines. I don't accept late work. So um, before you take the test, you know, people email me and they say, I am just bombing these quizzes. Uh, what am I doing wrong? And I would say the key to doing well in the quizzes is before you go to take the quiz, you know, make sure to review your no notes and highlight those things that were terms, or as I call them, um, every module there's a little list labeled terms and concepts because it's not always as easy as matching, okay, what's a scrim? A scrim is an open weave fabric that we use for um, scenery. You know, it's, it's not always as easy as just this is that and, you know, pick A, B, C, or D. Uh, sometimes it's a little more nuanced than that. So I call them also concepts and you need to understand the whole concept to be able to apply it in this situation. Because we're trying to teach you to think, right? Not just to um, plug in the jigsaw puzzle. We want you to be able to analyze the problem and use the concept you've learned in order to solve the problem. Dun, 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 dun. Jazz hand. I love that turtle so much. He brings me so much life. Then take the quiz, right? Last in the process of your weekly accountability is taking that quiz, yo. So I have hardly ever had a disrespectful student in class, in a live class, where I'm lecturing and I'm making face-to-face -face contact with them. Unfortunately, I often have disrespectful students in online classes. And being a communication theory nerd, I just have to tell you about this concept that's called firing, which is to say that I'm a disembodied voice. Nothing going on behind the curtain. You, it's easy for you to dehumanize me. I can tell you about my four-year-old. I can tell you about my beautiful husband who also works at Motlow. Um, I can tell you I'm from Cowan here in Tennessee, that I'm Tennessee born and bred. I went away for a little while, but I wised up and came back. Um, I can tell you all these things to try to paint a full depiction of a human, but still in our spidey sense and our beastie you know, way that we're all still animals, you can dehumanize me. You can troll me on the internet because I'm not a real person to you because I'm not flesh and blood in front of you. So I just want to challenge you before you send that email to me, to David Crutcher, to Brendan Taylor, to whoever your instructor of record is, take a moment to reread it and look at it and say, okay, is this inflammatory? Is this disrespectful? Is this helpful? Is this, am I asking the right person? Um, because, uh, you know, I've worked really hard here and I want to get to know you and I want this to be a humanizing process, but unfortunately the data, the technology uh, is against us communication theory wise. So always be more kind than you think you need to be. On those discussion boards, please, thank you. Um, I agree. If somebody rubs you the wrong way, if they say something inflammatory, um, this is not Twitter. Please don't jump on them and get into a whole thing, right? It, life is too short. That's This is academic, academic. I tried to say academic and academia at the same time and it came out academic, which sounds like, you know, a bad disease that you have to cut off your leg or something. Um, I just mean to say, this is not the time. This is professional environment. This is academic environment. Please don't go trolling like you would on Twitter. Um, there's a time and place for everything. If you need to take out some extra aggression, you know, use a different platform. Uh, this is professional building. Hopefully, part of the reason I love community theaters is because these are people that maybe you already know, people you're going to work for in your community. So um, don't 
start to sell your reputation uh, just because you lose your temper, you're having a bad day, and you forget that there's a human being on the other end of that profile picture. Please upload a profile picture. I'm a very visual person, and it's going to help me to see that face to keep you guys straight and get to know you. Um, and please don't upload a cute picture of your dog. Not that I don't care about your dog, but I want to get to know you, right? Um, now is not the time for modesty. All right. Well, uh, that's all, folks. Thank you for taking theater appreciation. If you have any questions, feel free to email me or your instructor of record. Our doors are open. We want you to do well. Let me say that one more time. We want you to do well. So please be responsible. Put these dates on your calendar. Print off that syllabi. Study it like it was your job. Because um, the key to success sometimes is not always being the smartest kid in the class. Sometimes it's knowing how to work the system and how to manage yourself and your time and your resources, your mental energies well. So I'm so glad you signed up for this class. And uh, I hope it proves to be a rewarding and helpful experience to you and that you grow your creative muscle, you grow your mind, and you become even more prepared to face the world around you. Thank you for listening.